So the closer you can get what you're drawing to your reference, the better. It's, you want it on the same plane. And what I mean by that is when I'm painting, some people have their painting up, up standing up like this, and what they're painting laying down on the table, well, that gives you a whole different angle, and it might be warped. So I want what I'm painting to be on the same plane, or what I'm drawing to be on the same plane. So if they're both laying down, then they're on the same plane. All right, so you just go along and... Okay, look up here for just a second. You know, I know you, you, when you start these, you'll start with one and build on the other. These are very, very simple. When you get down to here, this is where you're going to begin to develop looking for a reference point. If I want a reference point in a drawing, I want something that... Oh, it doesn't fit. Forget it. doesn't zoom. I want something that is, relates to everything else. So where would I begin? The, the oval. The oval in the middle. Right. Because that anchors everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I would start with. And then I would build from there. What would I do here? The line. The Which form, one? The diagonal. Diagonal or the vertical one of them. Okay, good. Either, either one. You could start with the diagonal or you could do the plus sign in the middle. And then you have smaller sections to deal with. So when you have complex things to draw, <coughs> always look for where can I begin? Where can I start? What, can I, what touches other things? You know, this, again, is very similar to this. Oops, I just marked on that. But it has a lot more going on it. This over here... This is where you, you might go, oh, that's a tree. Okay? This is, I don't want you to think of this as a tree. You start with the V? Yeah. The angle? It could, it could be, how close is this line to this corner? It goes here. It angles in, then it angles down. Then it angles back up. Then it's close to there, but it moves over a little bit. Then there's a little angle here. So, think, you know, do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, for example... Like, I might start here. I might go, that comes in, that comes down. I, I might even put a dot here because that's where I want to aim to, and it comes back up here. Then it has a little angle here. Then it comes in, and I'm out there. This comes here and down. Whoops, I was looking up there, not down here. This comes down here, curves around, comes up here. I might put a dot here because that's where I'm going to aim, aim. Aim up here. This cuts in, goes to the corner. Got a little fat, but that's okay. I'm still getting the image. I'm still getting a fairly accurate of you know, I'm one line at a time. Notice I stopped talking. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking when you're drawing, it's your brain's going to be frustrated. So you can talk and you can draw, but you really shouldn't do it at the same time. The, the things that I've done multiple, multiple, multiple times, I can do that because I've done it enough. But if you find yourself frustrated, it might be because you're listening to somebody talk or you're talking or uh, you have music on that has words, mm -hmm. and you're mentally singing the words. So uh, l listen for things that your body tells you about um, if I'm frustrated. If I feel frustrated, well, it might be because your, your brain is trying to go left brain. And, uh, and that's the same thing. When we, start, when we really get in the, in the drawing zone, it'll be really quiet in here. And that was what that when I knew I had 33 kids on task, that <coughs> room was silent. And it's like, <laughs> okay, so y'all get this, right? Okay, now look at the next page.
These are things I want you to try at home. I'm just going to go over them real quick. Um, and then uh, we'll do as much as we have time in here. But this is the kind of homework thing that this is going to get you to practice to drawing these, find, looking for the elements of shape, getting in the, le the out of the left brain mode. All right, this one is some guided drawing. Um, I would like you to try to create, it doesn't have to be this image, but you can. But I'm going to just show you how I would start it. If I'm going to draw with a pen, and you don't have to draw with a pen, but it, again, it makes you slow down, makes you observe. Um, but if a pen frustrates you, then get your pencil out, because this is not meant to frustrate you. And it's okay to erase. There is no sin in that. Okay, so um, what I have here is I'm just going to look. I'm not going to worry about the placemat that this is on or the abacus or whatever that's called in the background. If I want to draw, say, just this tub of or this cylinder of objects, I'm going to look and see after practicing those other things, this now is making my mind go to left brain because I recognize objects. So when I recognize objects, I've got to make myself think, okay, Where's the oval? Where's the ellipse? Where's the straight line? So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to, it's just like here, it gives you, here's the think lines are dotted. You see right here where I'm talking about? Right along here, this is what I'm going to draw. I'm going to start with that first. I'm not even drawing the whole, uh, the whole image. Oh, that was a little fat for an ellipse. Let me do it again. Okay. Then I look up there, it's a double line so I go ahead and do the additional line there then there's a straight line that's tucked in then there's a curve line then there's a fatter curve line that connects then I look and see I, I yeah just watch it's I, I look and see here here's a straight line I want to continue that line down I want to connect that curve again that's a little curvy there but that, that'll work another straight line and you can make it however tall you want if you want it really tall you can add you know lines to it or I might decide I want to leave it like the base of that where it curves in here curves in here curves here so that could be that could be the base I left this I didn't draw the line here because I'm working in pen I wanted that open because I have things coming out of it so here's one object, whatever's closest to you, you would draw first. Maybe have a little rectangle here. And it has little openings in it. I'm not even looking at the draw. Let's see. I'm not even looking at it. Um, then I do another one. There's like a little fork. And then we do another one going off over here. Oh, that has little spirals on it. I missed that. I wasn't looking. See, I wasn't looking. I was trying to do it too fast. And it has a brush, so a little curve. See, I called it by name. Uh, straight line. And a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. And then I come back and I connect the slight curve in the back. So you put in the one in the back after you put all the stuff in the front. And if I want to add the teapot to that or a cup to that. If I want to put a cup over here and I want part of it behind here, then I only do part of the ellipse. It's further behind. It's up you know, up further on the table. There's the coffee. You know, you, you, how you're building depth. Whatever's closest to you is further down on your paper. Whatever's further up is further away from you. Uh, if I did um, if uh, let's see, I don't want to confuse you there. Um, in the teapot, again, you want to draw the teapot. You would start with the lid. It gives you the think line. Sorry, part of that ran off, but I think you can figure it out. The top of the base. But practicing these kind of things where you see the guided lines, you think what would be next, what connect. But notice 
I don't start the top and then go to the bottom and then come back in between. Everything I draw connects to a line I've already drawn. And this is, you know, this, this is using elements of shape. This is one method of drawing, but it's one method to me that's less intimidating than, um, than some of the others I'm going to show you. But th that's what we're starting with today. So this would be, you know, try to, you can draw the whole scene, you can make up a scene, but what I would like you to do is try to find something that's a uh, cylinder. It could be something you have at home. It could be your coffee mug. It could be a vase in your house. It could be a candlestick. And look at it, and, okay, that's curved, that's angle line, that comes in. If it's a candlestick, you might even draw a center line of symmetry so that if I have an ellipse up here and it comes down, if it curves in, I want it to curve in the same distance on either side. And then it might curve out and curve out. We're going to work, oopsie, that went a little too far. Um, might come down. But if, if you have that line of symmetry there, then that might give you uh, a little more guide line. Then your candle would be curved here, straight up. Yeah, that's, that's rough. But you, know, you get what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to be working with mirror images next week. So play with this. Use the guidelines. See what you can come up with. Put that in your sketchbook. Now this last one is an assignment that I used to give my students. I call it the 20, bo uh, 20 boxes box drawing. And you do it the same way you did this other you put your paper over it you trace everything okay so I'm, I'm not everything excuse me just the boxes so I'm going to trace my boxes and I really would like you to do this one in pen this is one thing I could um, I've graded so many of these um, <laughs> I'm not going to grade yours, um, but I, I can look and tell if a student paid attention. But if you mess up, say you do something and you go, oh, shoot, then mark it out, draw another box, redraw it. Yeah. Get, forgive yourself. It's nothing, it's, it's, this is learning. This is learning to train your eye to draw what you see. This is learning to be objective and uh, ob you know, hone in your uh, observational skills. Do you have a question? In, in order to trace it, they're not going to be able to do it in here, I don't think. So you, might not, you might not be able to do it in there. If, so if you do need it on to. This kind of paper you, you can, yeah, you can do it on, tra on copy paper okay. if it's easier for you. Okay. Um, and, or you could do you know, two or three lines if you can see through your paper. You. It doesn't all have to be on one sheet. Gotcha. But I do want you to notice that the ones over here, these are recognizable. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you get to these and you go, <gasps> don't call it a brush. That's a straight line that starts at the corner, angles up. This starts here. And here's some hints on here. Draw, do not trace designs. You may trace the boxes. Do not erase. If you make a mistake, you may mark it out and start again. Draw what is closest to you or on top first. Okay? So if I'm in this box right here, the closest to me is this one. So I would start with, I would note where along this line does that begin. That's almost the third. And it curves to here. So you can put a dot on your paper and do it the same way where you put one, you know, where you're, you're able to put it, so it might be easier to do on paper like this where you can just fold it and tuck it right up underneath what you're doing. But when you pay attention to what's on top or closest to you first, then that eliminates the need to erase. Mm -hmm. If I drew what's on top, if I drew these in the back first, 
then I would have to know when to pick my pencil up or my pen up. If I draw what's in front first, then I don't have to worry about that. And everything else is connected to that. The same way with these down here. These are similar to the more detailed ones we just looked at right here. But if I can divide these up and, and make them smaller, this one, everything is related to this spiral. This spiral is on top. So when you start at the corner and you create that spiral, then you know where that triangle goes. You'll know where that one goes. You'll know where that goes. And you fill in with dots. If they're dots, you fill in with straight lines if they're striped. Here, it's very similar to the other. Put a plus sign down the middle. Here is a curved line. That's a straight line at an angle. That's a, that's a curved line at an angle. You see where I'm going? When you can break it up into one line at a time, that's all you're looking for, one line at a time. You can draw anything. And this is going to help train you to do that. And then when you get over here, just look. Okay, here's, here's a curve line. It has a wiggle. There's another curve line comes in and comes back here. There's a curve line that tucks around here. There's comes out, touches here. Not sure what it does down there. Kind of runs into, you know, there's times where it runs into stuff and you can't really tell what it does. Don't worry about it. Just draw what you can see. I had to be quiet because I wasn't paying attention. So when I'm talking, I get messed up. I messed up. Also, I had to get my bifocals fo focused right. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I see you. Okay, so that's close enough. And it might not even be like that close, but you see how I, I just, I started in one place and just worked out from it. And when we work bigger, are any of you left-handed? Okay, good. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it just means that I don't have to show you different direction because there's certain activities that we'll do. If you're left-handed, you start one direction and go one way. If you're right-handed, you start one direction and go the other way. So, I don't now, the other two that aren't here today might be. So, but we'll come to that. Okay, thoughts, questions, overwhelmed, excited? Excited. 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 <laughs> oh, that's excited. what I was going for. Okay. That's what I want. I want you to think of it as as a fun challenge, and and think of this as, you know, this is my this is my therapy for me today. And honest, I can do this, and I can ignore the world, and the time flies. And so, if you find yourself having to wait on things, you go to the carpool, and you don't have anything to do. You know, bring your little sketchbook or a, a clipboard with you, and um, and just work on it. But you know, homework would be, you know, to, to play with these, see what you can do with these sheets. And uh, you, know, you can do them more than once or not at all. But um, I promise the ones who experiment and play, allow yourself to play because this, you know, find your inner child, uh, you're going to be happy and less stressed. Okay, who wants a uh, watercolor thingy? I do. You no, do? I you too? Play. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, do you take credit card? I do. I think my square is charged. Okay. You want a brush? Is you want everything that they're getting? Uh -huh. Okay. Is it time? I think it is. using the ballpark and I, I guess I probably need to 
going to narrow thumb tips in. I think Richard can see it. Where did you get your pencil box? It's Judy, right? Judy. Judy. Where did you buy uh, Walmart, Target? Walmart didn't have a single. <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> Well, oh, and my that's a good idea. Hey, that was a great idea. I, I almost threw this out. Oh, I got a new cool. uh, makeup brush holder. Oh, oh, and I hung onto it. I'm like, no, 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 you know, add more to it and get to um, That's okay. Some, some Richard wasn't critical. But Roz, she's got all this stuff. If you don't have the right thing, yep. you don't I, have to worry about having the right thing. You, yeah, I have plenty for y'all to try. No, no, no. I was talking about I, I need a ballpoint pen to do this one at home. Oh, okay. I mean, a, a felt tip. I, I don't. Okay. I, you can I, use a ballpoint pen. I was using a ballpoint pen, but I'm thinking it might flow better to do it with the felt tip. Oh, it might. I'm going to just see.